here. My favorite place in El Mundo. Lake is seriously one of my favorite places in the world. I'll never forget getting here in 2002 with my buddy Jeff. We pulled up in an old chicken bus and saw these views and we're like, whoa, we have never seen anything like this. And we're from Colorado and there's a lot of natural beauty there, but this is just different. It's just stunning. Oh man, we had some good times here. Until we decided to walk up that volcano, go for a little hike, and we got robbed. Two guys came from behind us with machetes. They grabbed us and they pointed the machetes at our throats and essentially said, give us everything you have. And uh, we were 22 years old. Neither of us had had anything like that ever happen to us in our lives before. And it was without a doubt the scariest moment of my life. I didn't know if they were gonna kill us. I didn't know, I mean, it was freaked out. I was freaked out. You don't know what's gonna happen when somebody has a pretty much a sword at your neck. And uh, they took everything we had. We had some expensive cameras. I was making my first ever travel video back in 2002. They stole the cameras. We only left the country with one tape. Guatemala may be a tiny country, but it is full of fun adventures. And my buddy Jeff and I were determined to have as much fun as possible in this Central American paradise. And uh, I remember walking down that volcano in such a daze. I was like, what just happened? My adrenaline shot up, I got sick, Jeff got sick, both of our stomachs were messed up for a couple days. We were definitely shell-shocked. And it was a total bummer. <sighs> yeah, 99.9999% of the people in the world are good. I didn't let that moment scare me away from future travels, you know? Um, what it did was actually, it got me excited to travel more and to, uh, overcome that fear because it definitely did scare me. I was like, I don't want to travel around anymore in Latin America. I don't want this to ever happen again. I could get killed next time. <sighs> but nothing, luckily, knock on wood, I don't see any wood around here. Nothing like that has happened ever again. And uh, you just gotta be careful, I guess, and in the right place at the right time. And I try to <laughs> make sure that happens, but you can't always predict how life is gonna unfold. I'm pretty sure that the two guys who robbed us weren't like serial thieves. I don't think they were up there waiting for some gringos to rob. They were up there working in the fields with their machetes. They saw us walk by with all our gear and they're like, that would be easy. We could feed our family for a couple months if we get those guys. And it's just one of the unfortunate situations of Guatemala and a lot of other countries in Latin America where people are really poor and they're desperate. And they saw us as a way to uh, help out their family. And all I can hope is that they sold those cameras for at least a fraction of what they were worth. They were worth thousands of dollars, and I hope they got some good money, and I hope their families benefited from it. Uh, that's all I can say, you know? I'm not, you know, stealing and robbing is, is never the right thing to do, but, uh, and I'm not trying to justify their actions, but, you know, when you're desperate, and you have maybe four starving kids, or maybe in one of them sick and they need medicine, you're gonna do what you have to do as a dad to provide for them. So that's the scenario I have in my head for who these guys were and why they robbed us. They had to do it. They had to. And I hope that our cameras put a lot of beans on their plates for many, many months. I love Guatemala. I don't hold that one moment against any of the Guatemalans I've ever met. They're all good people. Muy buena gente. Good morning, amigos. It is 5.38 a.m. and uh, we are heading out on another day of running, run walking. I'm not quite sure I have the hang of this yet. Fast packing, the moon is bright. We're gonna go 30 kilometers today, which is by far our, our longest. 
That's why we're starting so early. Everybody's feeling great. You, you can tell. You can tell by the enthusiasm. Where are we going today? We're going to Las Fuentes Georginas. We're in new territory now. David is leading us the way. He's never done this before, so it's going to be new for everybody here. Buenos días. Buenos días. The area we're heading into today, it's called the Western Mayan Highlands. And uh, we're going down right now, but I think we're gonna go up about 6,000 feet throughout the day. Total of about 18-ish miles, longer than any other day. Look at this. Those are some views. It feels really good to be running. The first few days were just such a slog. My back hurts so bad and we're just crawling up and down these volcanoes. My body never really warmed up. But now, I'm loosening it up and I feel a lot better. This schoolhouse right here looks exactly like the little schoolhouse that was in my neighborhood in Honduras when I was working down there as a Peace Corps volunteer. All these villages up here remind me of home, home in Honduras. The people's faces, the kids walking to school, the fields of corn, Adios. and uh, just everybody being so friendly. Adios. Woo! Surrounded by beans. This is a good place to be for a bean lover. Oh yeah. This is shop blocks of Guatemala. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to find like traditional energy food, but we have little gusanitos, little worms. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just as good. It's sugar. Yeah. We are just cruising now through a bunch of old farm fields connected by a network of trails and it's really fun to think about that these trails have probably been here for centuries used by all the indigenous people in this area to get from their homes and their villages to their fields every day and uh, we're walking through time right now these trails have been have been well worn by the people of Guatemala in the Mayan Highlands and it's an honor to be walking in their footsteps. It used to be abundant. There's more people coming now and living mm -hmm. here. Through the Civil War. Oh. These guys actually suffer all that uh, against the army and the guerrilleros. That was back in the, the 90s, right? Uh, 30 years? Uh, no, that uh, started in the 60s yeah. and it stopped in the 96. So if you see here, it say like peace. Yeah. So why they make these coins? Uh, for the sign of peace, like uh, the stop of the, the civil war, the intern war. These Mayans must be in really good shape because the trails in all of these villages are insanely steep. Oh my God. Alisa? <laughs> hey Ryan. Check out this view. 
Got Fuego off in the distance. We've got Sagua back there. Come a long way. This is lunch today. It is a loaf of banana bread that I bought in San Pedro. And it's gonna be so good. If you're wondering where we're getting our water, sometimes these little stores sell bags of water. It's something we definitely don't have in the States. But they're coming in real handy here. You just bite off a corner and drink it down, like Allie's doing. Look at that action mm -hmm. shot. Making our way over this this ridge now, and we have our first view of Volcan Santa Maria. All right, we are at the highest point of our day. This is Sunil Volcano, and yeah, we're way above the clouds. This is the spot. Ooh, ah. The landscape here is like a quilt. You can see it's like a bunch of bodies laying under this quilt of agriculture. It's really beautiful. We've got the clouds that are just creeping in up the valley and been watching them slowly come towards us and getting really excited for the shade they'll provide probably as soon as we get to the hot springs. My favorite part of all these volcanoes are when we get into the clouds and it turns into a cloud forest. And it's just total fairy tale. I hear a monkey. Oh, there she is. It's crazy to think that just a couple hours ago, it was bright and sunny. And now, we're in a cloud. Allie booked us a hot springs hotel. We're gonna stay here tonight, it's open 24 hours. We're gonna sit in this water and it is gonna heal our bodies. And man, good work Allie, this place is pretty sweet. Hi Robin. Hi. How you feeling? Better. Better. I think I spotted Allie in the cave. How you doing? So dreamy in here. There's something about warm water that humans really love all over the world. We get into hot tubs and hot showers and hot everything. It's just, it just just makes you feel alive again. The next two days, we went up and down two more volcanoes. We're going up there. The top of that little cone right there. And instead of bore you with more footage of us walking up and down, I'm gonna to go to some epic drone footage. How's that? First of all, thank you, Guatemala. This trip was an absolute dream. And thank you to Old Town Outfitters for helping us make this adventure possible. And thank you for connecting us with our guide, David. Without him, this would have been much more difficult. And thank you to Ali for making this trip happen, for dreaming this up. And I will link her VR film soon when she gets it done and you'll be able to see Guatemala in all of its 3D glory. And thank you all for watching once again. Stay tuned for more. Please like and subscribe and tell all of your thousands of friends about Doozer TV. Top sunrise here in Guatemala and it's a good one. Cerro Quemado outside of Xela and man this has been a good trip. It's been a hard trip much harder than I anticipated which is good. Every now and then you gotta 
you gotta challenge yourself. You gotta face face your demons, both physically and mentally. And uh, man, there were some times where I thought I was gonna have to bail and go home. I mean, my back was really holding me back and I felt like I was holding the team back. And all I could do was just hope that it was gonna get better and take care of it and take muscle relaxers, which you can buy at any pharmacy here. <laughs> So yeah, I'm happy to be standing here. Thank you, Mother Nature, for creating all of this beauty for us to enjoy. <laughs>